My name is Ryan Phelps, and I'm going to pick up things here where we left off after looking at an introduction to simple pivot tables. We're going to look at some common charts used in Excel, and I'm going to build those charts off of a pivot table. If you haven't seen the video on pivot tables, look for the link and it will show you the way. We're going to be looking at several commonly used one variable charts, the pie chart, a histogram, and the percentage polynomial. We will also look at a combination chart which is known as the Pareto chart. Along the way we will be formatting charts, adding axis labels, uh, regapping uh, the space between bars, altering axes, ranges, adding data labels, and hiding pivot table field buttons. Here is our hypothetical gradebook. I'm going to insert a pivot table. And here we are. I will take and build a count up of my grades. Whether you're building the data or whether you're presented with data in this format, there are a few ways that you can choose from to display this visually. We're going to go to Insert, Recommended Charts, and I'll start with a pie chart. A pie chart is a great way to quickly show the relative uh, size of segments or categories. I'm going to add in data labels here. Um, alternatively, you might want to display your data using a histogram, which starts out as a bar chart. And more specifically, a histogram has either count or percentage uh, of the observations as a vertical axis, and then your categories as a horizontal on the horizontal axis. And we'll go ahead and get rid of the legend. There's only one category here. And a third option that we have, I'm going to hide these for now. Third option that we could use is to insert a percentage polynomial. I'll put that over here, scaling back a little bit. So we, here we have three different ways of presenting count data. And it, these graphs or charts are equally useful for presenting percentage data. So if we right click here and show field list, we can change the field value setting from a count and we can show it as a percent of grand total which will give us these results. Uh, a lot of times I, I prefer the percentage because it's more comparable and I think it's more easily uh, uh, understandable as opposed to counts but in some cases you may want to use a, a count. So now that we have this as percentage I'd like to go in and tweak these labels a little bit. I don't often use the built-in field buttons, so I will often go in and right-click on the field buttons and say hide all field buttons on charts. Also, as you may have noticed last time, under design, I like the pivot table itself to be an outline form. Just shows you what you're talking about. Changing the chart label if it's there is as easy as clicking and highlighting the existing title. And you can change the size and the color, all sorts of things you can do there. I'm going to get rid of this legend. We won't need that. Um, in this case, I will add axes labels. And I will format this one by right-clicking Format Axis Title. Over here, there will be an option that will let me rotate the text. I'm 
The nice thing about putting in your own labels is that you can reposition them where you like them and also reformat them, etc. Just change my table a little bit here. And we'll need the same thing here. And finally, if we're going to make this an official histogram, we need to get rid of the spacing between the categories. Um, in order to do that, I will come over here. This menu um, is somewhat hidden. There's another menu up here. But this menu has a lot of options and um, sub-selections underneath each of these options. So if you're trying to do something specific, you should be able to find it here. Of course, if you can't find it with a reasonable amount of effort, go ahead and Google what you're trying to do, and with any luck you'll find the answer. In this case, we are going to format the series, and by clicking on this area over here, we can pull back the gap width to zero. This concludes the simple one variable charts. There is another common chart that we want to look at, however. I will highlight the pivot table, hit Control C, scroll down a bit, and hit Control V. And now we have another pivot table that I can look at by right clicking and clicking on Show Field List. I can see the original uh, pivot table fields. So what I'm going to do is add grade once again. And in this case, I'm going to click on it, click on the value field settings, and I'm going to show values as the percent running total in, which will give me a cumulative percentage. After I've done that, I will click Insert, Recommended Charts, and I will click on Combination. And this will give me the Pareto chart that I'm looking for. I will say OK. In order to manipulate this one, since it's a little more complicated, I'm going to right click and select Move Chart into a new sheet and that will give us lots of space to work. Um, once again I'll clear out the field buttons and in this case uh, the Pareto chart should end at 100 percent it currently does not so I will format right click click format plot area um, under this arrow I will look for vertical axis values and then clicking on the far end, Axis Options, I will reset my minimum, or maximum rather, to 1. And then we're going to add in a um, Axis Titles and a Chart Title. And carrying out my usual Format changes. Moving a graph or chart into its own page helps with printing and as I stated earlier it gives you uh, a little more room to work with um, in building the the chart out. Now this legend isn't quite right I'm going to go back to the pivot table in order to fix that. Double clicking
And there we have it. I hope that um, this has been helpful, and thank you for your time.